Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you, Simon, for the introduction. Um, and it's uh, actually a pleasure to, to be here to present to the uh, PWI today. Um, about Oxford, so just a, a little bit uh, about me. So I joined the Network Rail Graduate Training Scheme back in 2009, spent uh, four great years uh, access all areas kind of in the Western region from maintenance to, to projects to, to ops, and then settled down in, in, in projects. So worked on various schemes, Reading, uh, Crossrail, Stoppy for Flyover, Act and Dive Under, and Crossrail West Stations. And since then, I've been I worked for a little bit of time in development, looking at Western England platform extensions and some other schemes, um, including uh, a, a kind of quite off the wall one, looking to um, power uh, some of the IET stock up, um, up some grades in the west of uh, west of England, sort of standalone overly elements. It's a story for another day. Um, and then, um, uh, and then I've uh, transferred over to Oxford following Crossrail West Stations. So Oxford, um, what, what what I wanted to bring to the to, to the PWI today is that over the course of my career, so nearly fifteen years now, I, I've seen a quite a marked improvement how good we are at delivering infrastructure um, within a within the closed box of the rail the rail industry and particularly that that can be seen now in terms of the way network rail setting itself up in terms of CP7 frameworks and um, uh, a case in point that we've we've uh, on on Oxford uh, had SRSA delivering discrete packages of, of, of rail work within the Oxford portfolio. And that has been straightforward and, and successful. We've just delivered three high-speed crossovers back in, uh, so brought those into service 9th of August this year, um, delivering uh, uh, the step change in, in performance to the north of Oxford um, from 25 mile an hour to 75 mile an hour. And as, as, as a package, that that worked really well and very light touch from, from the client um, bit. I'll go into a bit more detail what we did have to look at. The key message today is that we need to think slightly more outside of the rail infrastructure box and, and look at infrastructure more as a whole. And a main, po main point in, in Oxford, the Oxford area is um, highways integration and utility integration, particularly strategic utilities such as water. So we'll go into that a bit more. Um, okay, next slide, please. So what, why Oxford? Um, Oxford has been fairly static until the uh, recent changes have come along mm -hmm. since the, the 1970s, where Bolly uh, Road Bridge was modified um, from, from, from an arch to a, a, a deck structure. Um, there's been a lot of transition in Oxford over the previous century, where it was a real junction between um, the, the, the great operating companies at the time. You had um, Rawley Road terminus heading north on LNER, and then you had Western coming through. Um, it was then kind of cut back a bit from, from there, but a key through route. Um, and as you probably know today, it's a um, key through route for, for freight from, from Southampton to the south coast. You've got links up via the Cotswold Line to, to Mid Wales um, and improved links in the, in the last decades through to Vista and down to London that way, and then East West Rail uh, across to Cambridge. And obviously, then connections down to Decot, that, that's um, a, bit, uh, a bit, a bit, a bit, there's my sponsors diagram. Um, not showing Decot there, but obviously, and then out, out to Swindon and then the, the Southwest. So, um, uh, a, a key hub, really, and looking to improve the connectivity, reduce the reliance on on, on road uh, travel for personal use in and around Oxford, and um, uh, just just the standard one, cleaning up, making uh, you know lowering emissions in in Oxford. They're looking to be completely free of um, zero emission uh, vehicles, so they actually accelerated that that program. They got a zero emission zone in the, in the centre of town. They're they're introducing bus gates. Um, to um, limit travel in and out, but rather instead of through travel. That's been an interesting part of this project because essentially we've forced that issue by closing Botley Road Bridge, which I'll go on to um, a bit more. I'm sure Simon's well aware of, of that. Where do you live in? Uh, the other end of Botley Road, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, potential pros and cons, I guess, from, from, from that in terms of the way it's, it's changed things on Botley Road. Um, 
yeah, so we're looking to uh, increase uh, trains power by the, the close of the project by uh, on freight for two and a half trains and by four trains power through that key freight route. Um, we've got uh, pre-COVID 8 million uh, users, uh, 2021, that's down at about 5 million, but that's just season tickets. Leisure use in Oxford is still really heavy and growing. And particularly with Oxford Parkway and the other key hubs around Oxford coming in, and there's a new sort of change in the way the uh, stadium, the football stadium is going to be run. Oxford Station is, is at a limit for, for Peflo right now, so we need to do something there. Um, and yeah, big growth in, in homes across Oxford, as, as I've shown there. So 100,000 new homes in 2031. And, uh, you know, there's lots of key um, job sites. You've got Harwell, you've got Oxford Science Park, um, and a new development out to the north of Oxford um, between Oxford University and a development partner for another science park out there. Um, OK, next slide, please. So to see the, the scheme we're de delivering now is, is Oxford phase two, but there are two former phases. We won't go into too much detail, just give a bit of a, bit of a context. So it's, it's all about getting ready for East West Rail and improved connectivity through Oxford. So phase, phase one delivered two new bay platforms, platform one and two at Oxford, which is shown there on the phase two diagram. Um, got a few shots of that, that soon and introduced a few new crossovers, high speed uh, at Oxford North Junction. Oxford phase two has delivered these three um, high speed crossovers in lieu of two 25 mile an hour. Crossovers creating a full ladder to um, up and down Vista on the OXD. Um, throughout, we've got line speed improvements. So early phases delivered up to 75 mile an hour through running the normal direction. Um, we have and freight speed improvements. Also, we've, as part of Oxford phase two, we've um, gone full bi-directional signalling and bi-directional line speed improvements up to 75 mile an hour. Um, phase 2A is out to north, so it's level crossing closures due to funding at the moment. That's deferred, but we're still looking to implement those because that, that improves the OXD um, section and uh, lets us uh, realise those line speed improvements, which are going to the benefits in a minute. Phase 2E is signalling throughout. So that's been let, let to Siemens uh, and they've been integrating with the different delivery partners up and down the route. Um, yeah, phase 2B was uh, SRS Abling. And then phase 2C and D um, is uh, Kia and designers WSP. So phase 2D is Oxford Station Western Entrance. So that'd be a new Western Entrance. Uh, we've got a new retaining wall, platform five through line. Uh, and a new platform five face, rearranging and, and installing new platform buildings and canopies, a new subway under to the to the new western entrance. And then you've got phase two C, so that's the other enabling works to, to let all of those infrastructure changes happen, but also key benefits to uh, Oxford City and County Council in terms of highways improvements. Which I'll go into uh, in, in more details and other ancillary bridge work. So, rearranging a, a footbridge, Osney Lane footbridge, and key works around Sheepwash Bridge, which we're going into a bit more detail later on. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so some of the more detailed benefits then. So, obviously, level <laughs> crossings are standard safety improvements there. Uh, by increasing the line speed, we get two additional freight paths per hour. So you can see the benefits there are considerable. Interlacing those with the uh, services um, up to Banbury and beyond, uh, and increased track maintenance access um, uh, up in, in in that part of wood. So it's level crossing closures at Tackley, Sunday Lane, and Yarnton, replacing those with subject to agreement. Um, uh, foot, foot bridges or um, cycle bridges and um, revised uh, highways uh, access. Then we've got the high speed crossovers. I've talked about those. Uh, Botley Road Bridge. Um, so you can see there is a, a new span for the new 
um, island platform it's passed a provision for a future so oxford master plan um potentially up to 10 years in the future redevelopment of the city side of the station and uh, we're going to use that as a footbridge uh, until until that goes in um and the, the key benefit is that we, you know we've already got a rail bridge there that's 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 ready to go we've 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 put, put a lot of that infrastructure in already oxford city have a desire to uh install a, a, a landmark bridge in, in, in that area. It's, as, as you'll see in a minute, the, the where Oxford situated is a key east-west road in, in Oxford, and there's no other access from the from the east, uh, so from the north to the south, those two quadrants, there's no other real access. Um, so it's a real gateway um, structure, this this in Oxford, and um, that, 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 that's an important consideration throughout this, throughout this job. So you can see there the benefits. Um, it's neighbour for the future of station master plan. Key benefit this time is that it lets the city and uh, bus companies use standard high double decker buses. Currently, they have to order because this is um, obviously a key route in Oxford. Um, they have to order special reduced height double decker buses. Um, with the push for zero emissions vehicles. Um, they couldn't fit the batteries or um, or the infrastructure in a, a reduced height double decker bus. No one would um, no one would um, uh, design those uh, for them. So we are <laughs> rebuilding the bridge to to allow for that. What that means in practice at the moment is four point signed for four point four two meters. Um, doesn't need to go up by much. It's going to be signed for four point five six or thereabouts. Um, but the and that's the signage, but actually you can fit a bit more through with a bus due to the sag curves. Um, and uh, they'll, they'll be all notified uh, appropriately that they can actually drive drive through there. Um, improved cycle and pedestrian provision safety. Right now, Motley Road is a narrow, dark, wet, um, uh, most times of the year, uh, place, to, place to go through. There's one two metre wide pedestrian tunnel and a 650 wide um, footway uh, on one side of the highway and uh, yeah not much space to squeeze through um, if you're on, on foot or a bike so we're, we're transitioning that to standard um, highways uh, width with proper curves and, and offsets and uh, four meter wide on, on the north and south side of the bridge um, combined pedestrian cycle route at an improved grade um, for, for all users with better lighting and, and just general uh, improvements and integration into the station uh, either either side. And then we've got the uh, station works at the western entrance, so that serves a fifty uh, that provides a fifty percent increase in through uh, platform capacity for East West Rail and the twenty twenty four spec, which is when we're planning to uh, implement the changes by uh, walking time benefits and obviously station amenity improvements for all, all the passengers um, uh, through throughout the station. Okay, thank you. So I briefly touched on, on Oxford Phase 1, there was a couple of firsts. Um, we were the first project to drop modular S&C in the hole rather than building up on PEM lems. And then we've, in, in Oxford Phase 2B, we've we've done that again, actually, uh, at multiple point ends uh, this, this summer. So that, that's resulted in very fast installation times and, and less elements to go wrong. We've had to, Agreement with the the regional track round due to some failures on 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 some of the none none in the Oxford area that we've actually moved to a hybrid modular plus setup um, of of some through barriers, particularly around the crossing noses um, or one in three throughout the, the entire panel, dependent on the formation. Either end, so this year we've installed the uh, one of the, the turnouts um, ready for the new Platform 5 line. Because we're not consolidating the formation under that, that's where we've gone for full through there. Uh, so not full through there, it's one in three uh, through there is splicing those in with the, the, the other sort of panels and then the, um, the shrouds uh, bolting those together for increased long-term resilience where you've got that differential, differential stiffness. So there's a few shots from Oxford Phase 2 um in uh, over the last sort of five years there okay so then 
comes to Oxford uh, phase two B. So yeah, we completed that back in August of, of this year. And there's, there's one of the shots from the blockade. So Siemens implementing signaling through there. And, uh, and that went that went smoothly um, and and opened uh, open on time in conjunction with, with some proprietary works around the Oxford area. Okay, thank you. Just give, give an overview of the station if um, you're not, not aware of the area. So this is the uh, layout before we came along as part of phase two. So you've got Botley Road east-west, and you've got the north south that way. An existing main concourse out to the uh, out to the east city side, up to the city that way, and then surrounded by, by meadows and, and some housing and uh, retail and industrial along, along Botley Road. Osney Island to the uh, to the south and, and the River Thames wrapping round, but it doesn't wrap round physically. It, it, it tends to run through all the gravels that sit under Oxford. So that means when we're excavating down for Botley Road, there's, there's significant groundwater that we're starting to have to control, and uh, yeah, one of the key considerations for the project. Um, you can see there the old youth hostel that used to sit alongside Botley Road, Narrow Rail. Um, uh, all that off the, off the youth, youth hostel, and it was, I, in my opinion, uh, I think good timing with with, with COVID. Uh, that that very much changed the youth hostel's business model at the point that we were looking to uh, to purchase that. That was that was uh, just a standard transaction rather than um, uh, go through a Transport Works Act order and compulsory purchase. Um, so we've now demolished that and most of the other buildings up, uh, what's called Roger Dublin Way alongside the side of the station. So we've got an odd signal box uh, that was decommissioned as part of a previous phase and now that's been demolished. A key item and, and the first rocks was, was a decommissioning of an FTN core node. Um, so Oxford, Oxford station, uh, Oxford station node um, was, was decommissioned and then we moved um, various rocks. Well, Many many circuits, as you can imagine, into a, a node about a mile north of the station. Um, so there were there were key um, uh, Cisco uh, networking devices that were a critical asset for that. But we managed to get those in time and, uh, and get that moved out of the way. That sits in the way of the new platform five line. Uh, but since then, obviously, we recovered all the circuits and uh, managed to successful transition over um, maintaining redundancy on on the FTN network. While we did that. The north we have sheet wash bridge here so this is this is one of the tributaries many tributaries of the uh, river thames that run through oxford um so there's a small um uh it's about 20 meter span uh going over the the thames there very low headroom um so important consideration as we're working in this area about maintaining that that headroom also there's very limited space between the the back of people's gardens and and the new highway as it all gets squeezed down to make way for this new um, new bay line, uh, sorry, not bay line, through line, platform five. We've got the Carlton Nursery. Unfortunately, we couldn't, um, as, as much as we tried to design out any interface with them, um, the, uh, we, 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 we couldn't avoid making any changes. Therefore, as you start to make changes, their business case starts to um, diminish. Therefore, it's resulted in us uh, needing to move them out of their, their current accommodation into temporary accommodation in the in the car park. So we've uh, leased back from um, Great Western uh, space in the car park to build a temporary nursery. So temporary, it'll probably be there for about three years while we um, uh, demolish some, if not all, of the, the, the nursery there. Use that as a, a staging platform to build Sheetwood Bridge. And then we, uh, we're currently going through planning um, application for the new nursery to rebuild that in a, sort of in a smaller footprint, but still to realize their um, uh, current uh, specifications for uh, space. Um, and come south, so we've got a new platform five line going through, extending canopies to match the, um, the previous phases of the project, new um, cafe and waiting room on the platform and train dispatch buildings. Uh, and then you've got the western footprint here for the western entrance, and then access in and a new waste uh, holding yard and um, sorting yard there, which um, which shifts the, the, the pressure away from the uh, the railway station there, and um, and and is, is very much back of house, so it's not not seen by the uh, public day to day. Um, okay, next slide, please. Um, so you can see there's the 
screenshot as of um, yesterday, uh, we've got road closure on Botley Road. So this is this big news in Oxford. As, as you can see, as I was saying, there's, there's no real access in and out of Oxford, um, apart from, you know, there's a, quite a lot of access on the on, on the east two quadrants, but not, not on the west. You've got the A34 running out on the outside. Botley Road's, Botley Road's key for getting in and out of the city. Um, so the original plan going in uh, with, with, with Keir was to undertake single lane road closures. However, the programme for that was was extended beyond what was really desirable. So we developed with the, uh, the, the, the council a, a, a plan for a road closure. Um, we've, we've had to work with them and the bus companies and all other stakeholders in, in, in a lot of detail to make this work. And it's been running... Um, fairly successfully since uh, since April this year um, and, and has led us really crack on with the uh, utilities diversions I'll go into in, in, in more detail but you can see the kind of really strategic point of um, of, of, of where we're having to work and and why it's why it's a big deal to get it right and and, and deliver that quickly um, thank you next slide please So um, phase two C is Botley Road Bridge. So this has been <coughs> hacked around a little bit over the years and we are essentially rebuilding the entire thing. Um, it, it floods in flash floods and um, if the River Thames overtops, um, if, if the Thames overtops, then that's obviously, that's, that's a really big deal because most of the surrounding Oxford is, is, is flooded, particularly <laughs> on Botley Road. But um, there, there are pumps at the bottom, um, which one of the key project objectives is to look to upgrade those and um, add attenuation in there um, to ensure that that flash flooding, um, particularly as, as climate change um, yields uh, a high frequency of those events, is, is less disruptive. But it's important consideration for our uh, construction as well. Um, so we are obviously designing a, a, a pumping scheme to work both in in the in the final and uh, currently um, utilities as i mentioned we've got numerous uh utilities um but the the, the key ones here are the strategic um 700 mil diameter thames water main that is the only feed into the center of oxford um so therefore they're, they're, you know we can't cut over um until we've got the new uh, feed available obviously looked at because it's so constrained by the buildings around there we we, we couldn't design the bridge it basically we couldn't make it any wider in uh, and until we were impacting the um the, the the main so to make any to create any benefits from the scheme we had to impact that main um so we've been engaging with terms water over the last couple of years um, we are pretty much there in terms of the design. I'll, I'll just show you that in, in, in a minute, but it needs to be, it was difficult making the, the bridge low enough and, and also having uh, the access for Thames Water to be able to maintain that asset in the future. Um, and also we've seen installed it in the timescales that, that we had for us. And then, and this photo here shows um, how we have dealt with that key route in and out of, out of Oxford. Um, we've been working with the bus companies to create a, uh, a bus turning area and, and holding yard for five buses. So they're they're running their um, their bus timetable is a bit of a bit of a hybrid, really. Some shuttle buses, some of their buses running up to Botley Road, stopping there, and then a, another bus the other side. But that's been obviously a challenge with um, with the amount of drivers they've had as as well to their disposal. Um, but I was I think the project's pleased with how quickly. We were in, in about six months of consultation. We were able to agree, um, we agree the plan and, uh, and get that working. The only op th the only access through the uh, Botley Road currently is by foot um, or uh, pushing a moped or, or a bicycle along the footway. Um, obviously, there are some other small um, foot routes uh, around the station, but that's the key route in and out of the city at the moment. So it's imperative we um, we get on with the job and, uh, and get it delivered. <laughs> So just going into some more of the details then around Botley Road Bridge and the challenges. So, so we, we, we looked at numerous options to uh, undertake the diversion of the utilities, um, including directional drilling, uh, micro tunneling and open cut. Um, in the end, for, for most assets, 
apart from a sewer that obviously you, you need the fall on um, and you, you, you can't pump that. Um, we have, yeah, moved, moved to this open cut scheme that lets us put the new assets below the existing highway. So this is taken yesterday on site. Um, we're installing a SICAM piled wall. So that's the metal piles going in. Um, and then creating this services duct, which we then um, then need to balance against uplift. So putting quite a big ground slab in and playing around with the different fill materials to uh, to make that work efficiently. The um, this is the Thames Water sewer to go in. And then we've got a, a multi duct system for all the other utilities to tie those in. Um, it shows the existing bridge, so you can see there the footway and then the highway there, and the piles are installed in the 70s to take the new flat deck. Or apart from this northern wall, all of this then goes, and we drop the new. So we're going to be constructing the new road deck that will go in this year, and then we will then come back next summer, so July and July during the four-day blockade to knock down, lift out the existing. Uh, bridge and uh, southern abutment and then install the new box abutments um, via SPMT and then lift in by crane the um, the uh, bridge elements. Um, but yeah, a lot of work to do to get to that date and um, we it is tight and we are we are playing around with uh, various, various different scenarios to make that happen. You can see there on the uh, on the right, um, we've used a lot of VACX on on this project. It, it is it is really good in in constrained and sensitive sites. Um, apart from, although I think it's probably the best case. Really, we we discovered on a footbridge we're working on to the south as we, we were sucking uh, the the material out, we found a uh, grenade. So the call went out to the police. The, the area was evacuated. We, we drove the, the VACX south on our, on our whole road. And as, as the police came down and asked what, what was happening, uh, how, how we discovered it, they also uh, in, they got bomb squad down, but they also um, got us to uh, pump back out all the dirt out of the, um, the VACX. And that we wouldn't let, they wouldn't let us leave the site because they didn't want this bomb driving, potential bomb driving around the, the streets of Oxford. Fortunately, the grenade turned out to be um, uh, disused, so we tossed away a, a uh, deactivated one off, off the side of the bridge and we didn't find any more in the VACX, but um, it's an interesting, uh, interesting problem to have for a few hours. Okay, next slide, please. So, yeah, trying to rationalise what we've got in terms of the other utilities, so a lot of BT um, telecoms running through here. We've got private networks as well, Oxford University have their own fibre network, uh, Virgin Media, Vodafone and uh, <coughs> anything else. <coughs> Um, and we've also got, got gas and uh, HV and LV um, power, as you can imagine, for this key route in and out of Oxford as well. So again, it's my, back to my key message. This is when, when we were developing the project, a earlier consultation, I think, with utilities around their strategic assets would have been really useful to highlight this and start the process earlier with, with them because they, they, they also have processes that are as complex as network rails in terms of managing key um, key assets, key uh, 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 and infrastructure changes. And, and we're, we're trying to bring them up to speed with ours, but they've also got, you know, for, for example, Thames Water, they've had uh, leaks and other uh, service upgrades along Botley Road that there's potential for synergy with with there. So so that's my kind of plea really to any kind of any anyone involved in the development. Don't, don't think utilities are just sort of not so much a box to ticks, tick, but um, could be a big driver in the, in the success or not of, of a project. Okay, thank you. And then the other end of Oxford Station, so the north end, so up to the uh, right, we've got, got north, and then up top of the screen is west. To shoot wash cut. So that's another key constraint on the project. So the, the track underlying track drawing here is what we've implemented this summer. So we've adjusted a crossover out to the north of Oxford to make way for the new turnout. Um, currently, we've got a uh, an old rail deck um, used as a uh, an access road owned by Network, Network Rail, but um, 
with um, uh, with right away for Oxford University and the general public over the top. Um, we've, we're very close to the back of um, uh, residential buildings here, and this is the the nursery building here. Um, above, uh, so you've only got about 1.6 meters of headroom above the the, the footway uh, alongside the Thames or the Isis here, and uh, there's a 33 kV power cable there, various power cables, signaling cables running under the bridge, as uh, previous projects like to use that as a UTX. Um, so a really constrained site, I think that's that's going to be a an and there's no other access to the north. Um, so it's only accessible <coughs> lot of student and, and private accommodation uh, to the north there, which we need to maintain emergency vehicle access as well as uh, personal vehicle and, uh, and walking access to that as well. And in the winter, um, nearly every winter, this uh, kind of towpath uh, floods along there as well. And another challenge we've had is um, uh, legal mooring. Um, a, a gentleman moored his boat there for the last few years and sort of practically has squatters' rights. So we've been various uh, negotiations with them to better move them out of the way so we can start the works. Um, just about to move them, and we are praying that no one else moves in in that time. So the project team have been discussing: can we just hire a boat and park it there? Would that stop? stop uh, someone else moving back in, but that's, that's still to uh, be determined. And eventually when we get the um, a notification uh, that we can close the river from the EA, um, we we will um, uh, barricade and um, put, put floating pontoons across the end and uh, then we'll have access, but the project's a little bit nervous about that one currently. Okay, next slide, please. I'm just gonna talk you through Shewash Bridge. So currently uh, it's a, uh, an old star, I don't know what, that um, designation of that uh, that bridge structure was an old uh, a rail deck used as a road deck and a uh, footway cycleway off to the side. Uh, you can see even now it's, it's a constrained site with many utilities running through the side and about a <clears throat> metre, metre and a half offset to the back of retaining wall for the, the residents there. And somehow we've got to fit a, a rail deck through there and a vehicle access designed to to modern standards with with the appropriate width of cycle route and, and curb lines and what have you so you can go to the next slide please so i think just about that managed to fit that through but we are we are really tight that's the back of the garden there so um very careful and we've designed it very much to work around uh, not destabilizing their retaining wall and um obviously it, it does require um intrusion into the nursery so area there um, where we'd be putting, putting out sort of small sheet piles to retain the wall there. We've gone rather than reusing the existing abutments, this was, this was the AIP plan, we've gone to this oversell method um, that, that, that de-risks um, and, and, and lets the construction staging work in a far more efficient manner, i.e. we can, if you go, if you have a look at this corner up here, we've got to, currently there's a road, road bridge through there, um, we need to maintain that road access. So how do we do that? We need to um, install a, a temporary road bridge. Um, that temporary road bridge will be um, using, has to make use of the, the new piles that go in rather because we need to land it straight straight in. Um, we, we don't have access um, to uh, a, 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 enough um, of the existing infrastructure to be able to actually remediate that whilst keeping the roads open. Um, so we're lifting the temporary temporary bridge keys. No, don't don't click on the whips. Um, and then we will um, then lift out the existing road deck, and the new uh, rail span goes in, which is as narrow as it can be. Um, once we've put the piles in, again another key key area of risk: we're piling very close to the existing structure. Um, so obviously that'll be fully fully monitored. Um, then once the the rail decks in then we will use that as a temporary uh, road access, um, lift out the, the temporary road deck and then install the uh, the main road deck. So with traffic lights and traffic light sequencing, pedestrians and cyclists, as well as vehicles through that area during that time, due to the minimum width of, that, of the rail deck there. Okay, thank you. So there's a, there's a section there showing the, uh, the final arrangement. Um, just an aside, um, 
we are designing Oxford to um, work uh, with our release. Our, our route section four was pulled by the, the DFT. Um, we've got an AFC design for Oxford, so we're updating that, that AFC design. So when for when funding and, and the, the wheel comes through to electrify uh, to Oxford and North, just to the north, I should, um, that that will be ready to run. So we are where it is sensible and prudent. We are implementing foundations, so portal uh, connections on the canopies are, uh, that match up with the, the, the earlier phases at Oxford. Um, and we are installing foundations next to the retaining wall on platform five, um, but but not but not too much. Given we don't know how long it will be until that point, the uh, obviously OLE systems change and morph over, over time, as you're all aware. And, um, and and the way that might be electrified is is in transition. So we are and we just don't know how long it will be. So we are giving a, a very viable design um, ready to be picked up and implementing those areas where we don't think there's going to be much change where we're constrained by s and c uh, and another and other sort of key station elements um, but leaving enough flexibility again to say well there are maybe a few ways you could you could solve this problem um but because we don't have full funding we, we, we're, we're not for example changing any assets that we're not touching that are say substandard um, clearance for example Bosnia lane footbridge to the, the south of the station that, that will remain um uh, being delivered by the, the by the early uh, early funding when that comes through. Okay, thank you. So then we have the western entrance. So this has been through a few iterations over the years, but the um, the, the photo that you can see is the one that got got prior approval planning um, earlier uh, about November twenty one, I think. Um, so it's a few images there, so you can see the subway uh, connecting the, uh, the platform four five lines. Um, we, we're quite, quite constrained as a site, as I mentioned earlier, Oxford floods, well not from flash flooding, but sometimes the Thames. Um, we, we're having to design Oxford uh, West Entrance so that it can flood and be easily recoverable in a, re in a result of the flood. If we, if we uh, fully bundled it all the way around and ensured that water didn't go in there, we'd be increasing the flood impact on on residents and given it's a second means of access to station and that the the, the eastern city side is is higher and out of the floodwaters we didn't think it was reasonable to um, uh, you know engage in in an argument with the environment agency that that, that was you know it felt like the more right thing to do is to design it so that we could recover it in in, in the uh, the event of a flood however obviously hopefully that that, that is obviously quite a rare event um, the last time there was significant flooding there was back in 1991, but it's, you know, it will happen if this, this station will, will flood at some point um, in, in, in the years going forward. And that's been an interesting design challenge, still something we really do need to overcome in the design of the station and how we, how we engineer that. Um, what essentially it means is that we'll be putting in all the plug sockets and electric systems at a level just above that. That, that flood water, the high flood water level with the climate change allowances put on there. It's about one and a half meters from ground level. So it, it kind of works. What it means in terms of waterproofing of gate lines and other elements um, uh, and and the, um, the the way the sewage is, is, is treated uh, out of the toilets is still something we're working around. Um, the, the architects came up with this, uh, they, they, they visited Oxford and realised Oxford was a lot of um, holes in walls. If you, if you walk around Oxford, particularly the collegiate areas of Oxford, it's quite a lot of the private, private land behind, but you can access into those, which is essentially going for a hole in the wall. So that's the idea with, with the retaining wall, which is also an acoustic screen there. Um, you buy your ticket and you've gone through the hole in the wall, as you can see there, uh, onto the station. Um, Another innovation for Oxford is the biodiversity compensation. So obviously we, we are losing some trees and biodiversity around the current site. So we're implementing a green roof on the, on the station, which is likely to be a wildflower um, meadow uh, mix on there. But we've obviously had some interest, interesting conversations with the uh, SFO Great Western around the maintainability of that and the particular risks, uh, looking at fire risk, 
which we decided um, uh, which we assessed as not being a high risk given the the large um, medium of uh, grow material uh, that's on and the, and the degree of separation from the rest of the structure um, and uh, and those maintenance requirements so we're working with various companies to uh, to, to, to get that specified um, you can see the retail unit and the other key aspect of the design of the urban realm is this kind of quadrangle uh, space for for public gathering and uh, uh, potential pop-up retail activities and, uh, and general um, uh, not just being a, a a back entrance but being something that enhances the urban urban realm and the and the street scene around that okay thank you Right, that, that brings me to the end of the whistle stop tour through through Oxford phase two and what we're doing at the moment. Um, I open the uh, online and, and the room to, to questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Lawrence. That's brilliant. Um, Gary, are you able to see if there's any questions online? Yeah. Do you want to switch the well, camera on? Uh, the camera on so you can also see the room. Yeah, I'll leave that one on as well. Okay. Uh, I'll just switch the spotlight on a second. Still working out how this all works. I saw there was uh, one chat, one question was yeah. went through. Yeah, so um, the OD would like to know, uh, would like you to elaborate on how this project's going to increase the lead uh, to increase the track maintenance access for the for Oxford. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think I mentioned track maintenance access to the phase two C area. So we're looking to install uh, lookout pods, lookout devices uh, to the north there, but we, we've got a full um, line side access strategy. So we are improving um, access points in and around the station area as well. So there's one, uh, there's an existing one just off Bobby Road there that we are maintaining and improving the the, the three axis across the bridges as well. Um, any anywhere we've intervened, so um, Osney Lane footbridge. I haven't really talked about too much, but it's a footbridge to the south of the car park, where we've got the new turn up line going in. We're installing new foundations there, and we've ensured that we've got a good safe test walkway up and over the uh, uh, the derailment uh, barrier um, arrangement there, and uh, and access through into because we're creating the new. 10 foot as well it was key to get access into those areas to, to to the local suites and we've been engaging with the maintainer through throughout the last couple of years to ensure that their requirements are met really um earlier phases as well installed various hall roads alongside particularly the high speed crossover section so they've got improved access there and and the and the mom for example and and uh, uh, and the, the techs use those uh, users a fair amount um did that answer your question so, so thank you. Is there anyone in the room that's like to ask a question? Um, traditionally, is raising your hands. So, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Full disclosure: I live in Oxford, West Oxford, <laughs> very close to Simon actually in Botley. Yeah. Um, it was in the news that there was a Victorian arch discovered while digging under the the bridge. Do we do we have any further information on that? <laughs> so, so that was um, I was frustrated with that. Um, strictly. Uh, the, the 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 bridge was it was known about it was uh, the it, it was it was the extent I think that wasn't fully appreciated. So the the the, the way the bridge is built because it sits in the, in the groundwater, um, good two meters down in the groundwater in places is they lined so they they, they dug out they lined it initially what's called a puddle clay so very thick, uh, viscous impermeable clay, and then they lined that again with three to four courses of brick um, to create a, a waterproof seal uh, around the area. And we're going to do the same, but in a modern, modern forms of construction. That's that's what was discovered and that, that's what went into the news. The extent was we just thought it was between the, the bridge piers, it actually sends right out to the the edges of the, the, the wing walls all the way up to the uh, the roundabout and, and up to um, up to the other two junctions the other end. Um, so so that the extent of that, because we had to par for all of that, that's what sort of has delayed this summer a bit. Um, what I didn't mention is below Osney Lane again. It's, uh, I didn't cover it in the in the photos here, but it's an interesting structure because we found a grenade there. We also found a medieval arch under that. 
Um, it was discovered just a week before the blockade. We were we were putting in the, the the final foundations for the for the new pier, and we broke into this this old arch, only a single brick thick, but it, the, the stones were about about this big. Um, shone a shone a handheld lidar scanner down there and got a little scan and got the architects down there. Fortunately, so not the architects, the um, archaeologists. Uh, fortunately, in negotiations with uh, city council and and in the archaeologists, who said, yeah, it's an interesting relic of the old uh, Osney Abbey to the south. However, given its location, it was two three meters below track level at that point, seeming to run as like a culvert across along the same line as the footbridge. Um, and it was partially collapsed. Couldn't see much further than a couple of meters either way. Um, they, they agreed that we could just leave it. It's not been an issue to date. Going to record it being there, but not. But this will not create yeah, an issue. Sort of any, any further than that. Unfortunately, we, we sent away um, the remnants of the uh, uh, organic matter at the bottom there. We won't get any interesting results back from that either. So, uh, there have been some interesting discoveries so far. Thank you. Is there any, uh, any other questions in the room? Is there any questions online? Uh, no. Oh, so. well, anyway, uh, thank you, Lawrence. That's been really interesting. Um, obviously, being a, a local, I've been following what's been going on at the project. Um, a lot more involved, I think, as a project than uh, was initially thought, I think. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, you've uh, covered, uh, I think you've covered quite well what's going on. I'm pleased personally as well that you've got passive provision for electrification. That's always very wise, um, especially this. Um, and also considering uh, maybe in a few years time when I'm wading through the western entrance knee high water, I'll remember this talk as well to say actually you knew about this in the first place and have mitigated for that. Um, anyway, so I'd like to say uh, thank you very much and uh, should we um, thank Lawrence in our normal way? Thank you.